Okay, hello. My name is Will. Um, today I'm covering the NASDAQ. Um, to further focus in, I am covering the QQQ. I'm covering the US 100, which is the 100 largest NASDAQ companies that are non-bank. Does that make sense? Okay. So I'm covering like a Tesla, Apple, uh, Amazon, Google. I'm covering every big tech. Baba. I'm, I'm talking about Fang right here uh, is what I'm talking about. And, and when, when the big Fang 10 go up, uh, Twitter, Facebook, NVIDIA, um, the tech 100 goes up. Okay. So anyway, I have options in um, in QQQ. I have calls. Okay, I'll just leave it at that. I, I'm not trying to say what my expiration dates are or what my price target is on my calls. Um, so so I'm actually using NQM twenty one chart. This is the QQQ futures chart. I didn't buy futures this time. I've bought futures. I like buying futures. They work just like regular options, except they they tend to have more leverage. They're a little more dangerous. But anyway, the chart's the same. Here on the top, on the price action, I've drawn a, a Fab Fins, Fabricini Fins, however you say his name. I don't want to disrespect him. I know I said it wrong. But... um. Here we see that that um, you know we've dipped down below these fins right in March, um, and it looked like we were never coming back. April came around and we got above all the fins, so it looked like the fins were no longer um, viable. I I uh, I kept the fins on my chart because I was like you know this may this may come back. You know, uh, of course, I adjusted my first target line. You know, I adjusted my fins out um, to be more, you know, present, current with the price situation right now. Um, as you can see, uh, middle of April or so came and doom hit again. We dropped back into the fins again. Um, now here's where I enter the picture because it was going back down into the fins. I was kind of watching it. Those fins just represent a price level. Uh, they're drawn out at an angle like that, which is kind of cool. Um, but once this thing jumped back above all the fins again, I started getting interested. Um, I wasn't going to buy on the straight up. Those are daily candles. I wasn't going to buy yesterday. Um, I probably should have bought the day before, but we were still in the fins. And I was thinking, oh, that top fin's going to provide some mean resistance. Now that top fin's going to provide um, support. So when I seen tech dip big today, that's when I bought calls. You buy them on a red day, you get them for a lot cheaper than if you buy them on a green day. Um, I won't go into explaining that because I know you guys are probably more advanced than that. Um, I I point to the on balance volume here, um, and that's like a that's like a VW bus in my opinion. The Nasdaq has taken some hits. But as you can see, that, that volume keeps increasing, which means longs keep increasing. Um, which means if longs keep increasing, if that keeps going up and down but keeps working its way up anyway um, and doesn't go below zero, then the shorts will become on the wrong side of the trade. And you know what happens then. Uh, short squeeze. Anyway, the RI, the RSI is really nice. It's down there low. This is all oversold stuff right now, all this tech. Um, the Stotch on the bottom um, confirms, you know, pretty oversold. It went down through the bottom, but it's working its way back up. Uh, 
I bought the calls for about a month out just because with calls I normally buy further out um, with puts I usually buy shorter out does that make sense because with puts I'm usually I'm usually buying like going okay this thing's gonna dip real quick if it doesn't dip real quick the put expires worthless if it does dip real quick then I get paid but that holding a put for a month and waiting for the price to come all the way back down like buying a put on the spy at 400 and and over the next month it goes up to 420 why did you buy that put for a month time frame did you think one day it was going to go from 420 to 390 i mean that can happen but let's get realistic here yeah puts should be short term you know something's going to happen then again you're going to get charged high premium if you know something's going to happen cuz the seller of the puts going to know something's going to happen too and they're going to they're going to tack on that premium to protect themselves but anyway this covers a little bit of options covers a little bit of price action it's a little basket there's a couple goodies in there a lot of garbage in there but i hope this helps